Okay, here we go.
sing tonight, everything that was going on tonight was all done for the honor and the glory of the Lord. But I appreciate all of the hard work that was put into it. And to show our appreciation tonight, let's give everyone a big hand. I don't want to keep you late, not want to keep you uh, for a long time tonight, but I would like to just talk to you for a little bit, and uh, we'll be out of here in just, just a, a few minutes. Uh, I'm one of those that uh, Thanksgiving is my favorite holiday, <laughs> and uh, I, I do everything that I can to push and hold off Christmas so that uh, Thanksgiving doesn't get overtaken, and I want to make sure that Thanksgiving gets its due. But uh, Christmas is a great time of the year as well. One of the things that we do around here is I say no Christmas carols, no Christmas songs until after Thanksgiving. And another thing that we try to do is we try to make sure none of the Christmas decorations get put up before Thanksgiving. But I tell you what, the day after Thanksgiving, <laughs> the day after Thanksgiving, the oranges and the yellows and the browns, they all come down and the reds and the whites and the greens and the blacks, they all come out and you can see the way we've got it all decorated and that's just the colors that are used at this Christmas time and um, I want to look at those colors and what they mean. The Bible has a, a meaning behind each and every one of those colors. There's a lot of colors, it's a very colorful time of the year and uh, all of the lights and, and different things and I know that uh, gold and silver are also considered Christmas colors. I found out that blue is also a Christmas color, but we're going to look at the four main colors here. We're going to look at what they mean from the Bible. The first ones we're going to look at are the red and the white. The red and the white. In the Christmas traditions, back in the uh, uh, 1300s, 1400s, they would have a uh, passion or a, a, a paradise play that they would do on uh, December 23rd. And they would put a tree up and it was the paradise tree. And they would usually use a pine tree and then they would tie red apples to it. And then they would act out the fall of man. And this was for people who could not read. They couldn't read the Bible for themselves. And so they would act out different stories in the Bible to try to teach people who didn't know how to read some of the Bible stories. And usually, December 23rd was Adam and Eve Day, and that was the day that they would uh, do a play about the, uh, the fall of man. The red apples on this tree represented the fall of man. It represented the sin of mankind. Also on this tree, they would tie white, uh, white pieces of paper that represented the bread that was at the Lord's Supper which represents the Lord's uh, body and so representing the purity of the Lord Jesus Christ in that white and so we have the red and the white that's used during the Christmas time well the Bible also puts those colors together and I'd like to read to you just a few verses here where it talks about these colors first of all in, in Isaiah chapter number 1 and verse number 18 the Bible says come now let us reason together saith the Lord though your sins be as scarlet I thought that was interesting. Most of the time when we uh, uh, talk about sins, we talk about black or we talk about a dark color. But God describes sin as a red color. Our sins are scarlet. He says, though they be, uh, though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Amen. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. So God here puts the red and the white together in his scriptures. And he's talking about the red as is a representation of our sins. And uh, the Bible again talks about all of, all of our sins. And those uh, times where we've broken God's law. Where we've not believed in God. Where we've not trusted God. We've not depended upon God. And because of those things uh, that God describes that as red. And he says the, the more we sin the redder they get. But he wants them to be white, white as snow. The Bible tells us in Psalm chapter 51, verse number 7, Purge me with hyssop, and, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. David writing that 
said that I wanted to be white. I wanted my sins to be washed away, my red sins to be washed away. I wanted to be white like the snow. But he said, God, that's something that I cannot do for myself. I need you to purge me. I need you to purge me with this up. I need you to wash my sins away so that I could be as white as snow. Another, uh, and, and here's the interesting thing. Our sins are represented by red. The purity that God wants us to have, our sins being washed away, our forgiveness of our sins, is represented by the white. But in the Christmas tradition, there's another meaning to the red as well. The holly bush has those thorns on it, and it's green during the winter months. It also has the red berries. And the holly bush represents the death of the Lord Jesus Christ, and the red berries represent His blood, which represents the same thing in the Bible. In Revelation chapter number 7, verse number 14, He says, And I said unto him, Sir, thou knowest. And he said unto me, These are they which came out of great tribulation, and have washed their robes, and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. So we have our sins that are red or crimson or scarlet. We have the fact that God wants to make us white. He wants to make us pure. He's going to have to cleanse us. He's going to have to wash us. The way He's going to wash us is He's going to wash us in the red blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Red cancels out red and makes it white. Amen. And that's scripture, and that's Bible doctrine, and that's the red and white. So when you see the red and white during this Christmas season and during this time of the year, I want you to think about those things. I want you to think about your sins. I want you to think about the fact that God wants you to be white. He wants you to be uh, washed from your sins. He wants you to be forgiven of your sins. And so that's why Jesus came. That's why He came. He, he came so that He could die on a cross so that He could shed His blood, so His red blood could wash away our red sins and make us white as snow. And so that's the red and the white. The next two colors I'd like to uh, look at are the green and the black. The green and the black. Those two colors also go together. Of course, the Christmas traditions come from the European continent. During this time of the year, it's very uh, dark. And it's very cold and lots of snow and all of those things that we don't get here uh, in Hawaii. But it's a very cold time of the year. And I can remember living in Indiana and uh, the snow when it first came, everybody was excited about it. But after you've been in it for about a three, two, three weeks, it, it starts getting gray and it starts getting yucky. And, and you start saying, when is spring coming? And that's the way it was in Europe as well. And so what they would do is they would try to brighten things up in their homes by making, uh, uh, decorating their homes. They would go out and find the only green thing they could find. They, they found mistletoe and they found pine trees or evergreen trees and the holly. And they would put these things up in their houses. And that was to remind them no matter how dark it gets, no matter how gloomy it gets, there's still hope. Spring is coming. And so uh, what it was to kind of give them a good hope and, and help them to uh, cheer them up as they go through the dark seasons of the winter months. Uh, in Rome and in Egypt, before this, even uh, the green was given to, to one another during the winter months as a good luck charm. It was something to give to somebody to give them good luck and give them uh, hope and cheer. And so the green and the black go together. And again, in the Bible, these colors are mentioned and these colors are talked about and these concepts are talked about. In Jeremiah chapter number 17 and verse number 7, it says, Blessed is the man that trusteth in the Lord. I want you to make sure that you hear that part. Blessed is the man who trusteth in the Lord. It's not good luck for us. It's blessings. And it comes from our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. It says, Blessed is the man that trusteth in the Lord, and whose hope the Lord is. For he shall be as a tree planted by the waters, and that spreadeth out her roots by the river, and shall not see when he cometh, but her leaf shall be green, and shall not be careful in the year of drought, uh, neither shall cease from yielding fruit. In the Bible, green represents life. It represents hope. 
It represents all that God wants for us. Again, God wants us to, to pass from death to life. He wants us to have light. And we have that evergreen tree. And that gives us the idea of not just life here on this planet, but He wants to give us everlasting life. He wants us to have it be like that tree that is planted by the rivers of water, and it's constantly green. It's always green. It never dies. That's what God wants for us. He wants to remind us with the green that we, we have a hope in Him. If, if we put our trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. But we look at that black color there and we realize that that represents death. And so we have life and death. The green and the black. And just like with the red and the white, a very interesting twist here. You have the red sins have to be washed in red blood in order to be white. We have to have to, uh, to be delivered from death. We must have death to give us eternal life. Amen. The Bible says it this way. It says in, in John chapter 12, Verily, verily I say unto you, except a corn of wheat fall to the ground and die, it abideth alone. But if it die, it bringeth forth much fruit. Here Jesus is speaking about His resurrection. He's talking about the fact that He has to die in order to have a resurrection. He also has to die in order for us to have a resurrection. For us to have everlasting life and eternal life, somebody had to die. Somebody had to die for our sins. We either have to die for them ourselves, we either have to pay the penalty for our sins, or somebody else has to do it. And again, that is why Jesus came. And so Jesus tells us once again in John chapter number 5 and verse number 24, Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. God says, I want you to have everlasting life. I want you to have eternal life. I want you to come out of the darkness. I want you to come out of the blackness. I want you to come out of the death. I want you to pass from that into eternal life. But there's only one way that it can happen. That is if somebody dies in our place. That's if somebody sheds their blood for our sins. That's if somebody died on an old rugged cross and died in our place. And if we put our faith and our trust in Him alone, not in a church membership or good works or morals, but in what Jesus did for us, the Bible says we have a guarantee from God that we are passed from death unto life. Amen. We can say without any a shadow of reservation, I know that I have eternal life because it's not what I've done. It's not what I've done for myself. It's not my, my good works. It's what Jesus did for me when He died on the cross. Amen. So when we see those colors, the black and the green, Realize that it, that represents passing from death unto everlasting life, eternal life. And both of these things take place by a little word called faith. It's by faith alone. Amen. And this time of the year is the best time of the year as we see all of these representations around us to remember the importance of eternal life and knowing for a fact that you're going to heaven. And you die. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we come to you. And again, we thank you for all the great things that happened tonight. We thank you for the young people that sang. We thank you for the scripture that was quoted. We thank you, Lord, for all of the things that you have given to us and done for us. And now, Lord, we ask that you'd help us as we see the colors of Christmas, that you would remind us, O oh Lord, of what you did for us, especially at this time of the year. I'm going to ask everyone to keep their heads bowed and their eyes closed for just a minute. We're not going to have a normal, uh, what we call an invitation around here, but I just want to give you an opportunity. If you're here tonight, and you don't know that your sins have been washed away, you don't know that you have eternal life, as, as I said earlier, and as the Bible says, it is a matter of faith. It is a matter of putting your complete and total trust in what Jesus did for you when He died on the cross and rose again the third day. The Bible says we have to recognize the fact that we are a sinner. 
We have to recognize that there is a penalty for the sins that we've done. It doesn't matter if you can call it a big sin or a little sin. It doesn't matter. The Bible says that if we have, if we've broken the law in one point, we are guilty of all. And there, there is a penalty. But Jesus loved us so much. And that's why He came. That's what Christmas is really all about. That's why He came. He came to become flesh. So that He could die on that old rugged cross. So that He could shed His blood. So that we could have eternal life. And He says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. If with your heart you would like to trust Christ as your Savior right now. I ask you from your heart to just call on the Lord. Ask Him to give you eternal life. Tell Him that you're a sinner. Tell Him that you're trusting Him and Him alone for eternal life. And ask Him to give you the gift of eternal life. Trust Him the best way you know how right now. Call on Him and ask Him to give you that gift. If right now the best way you know you've trusted Christ as your Savior, you call on Him right now. Not sometime in the future, or I'm sorry, in the past. But right now in this service, you call on the Lord and you ask Him to save you right now. Would you just let me know by just simply putting your hand up in the air and I'm going to pray for you. Is there anyone at all like that? I'm trusting Christ as my Savior right now. I ask the Lord to save me. I ask the Lord to come into my heart. And to give me eternal life. Thank you. Thank you. Father, again we come to you thanking you for all that you've done. Jesus, thank you for this time. Thank you for all that, that happened. We hope, oh Lord, that you are happy and pleased with this night. We ask, Lord, that you would watch over all of the festivities of tonight and tomorrow. And again, Lord, that your name would be glorified and honored. If there's anyone here tonight, Lord, that still is not sure of eternal life, help them to call upon you and help them to know that they have that eternal life, that everlasting life that you have promised to them. And I ask these things now in Jesus' name. Amen. Just a minute, I'm going to dismiss here. Uh, Miss Paws brought some cake. If you would like to participate in that, we're going to set up a table and have that out there. And if whoever wants it, you can help yourself to that. Thank you for coming tonight. We appreciate it. And uh, if you see one of the kids, tell them thank you or any of the ladies that were working with them. Tell them thank you for tonight. Have a Merry Christmas and you are dismissed.